Hi, I'm Phil Loring. I'm the Errol Chair in Food Policy and Society at the University of Guelph and the Errol Food Institute. Dr. Thilstead, thank you for joining us and congratulations on receiving the Errol Food Innovation Award for 2021 for your groundbreaking research, critical insights and landmark innovations in developing nutrition sensitive approaches to aquatic food systems, including fisheries and aquaculture. What does this award mean for you? Thank you, Phil. I'm honored to receive the 2021 Errol Food Innovation Award. As a researcher, this is an important recognition of the essential but often overlooked role of fish and aquatic food systems in agricultural research for development. I have dedicated my career to research that improves nutrition and health for millions of malnourished children and women in countries across Asia and Africa, where fish and other aquatic foods are integral to local diets and culture. This award acknowledges the crucial role of diverse aquatic foods in food system research, policies and interventions at national, regional and global levels. Your innovative work to improve nutrition and health has been effective in part because it emphasizes local and traditional resources for food. How did you cultivate that approach to your science? Well, I think my appreciation for local foods was sparked during my childhood. I grew up in Trinidad and Tobago, and at times in our home, we were four generations of females. My grandmother shared with us her love of local, diverse, and seasonal foods, and taught my siblings and me about the importance of these foods for growing up strong and smart. As a researcher, this fueled my passion for working with communities to identify and design local food-based solutions to improve nutrition and health. I first used this approach in my work in the late 1980s at the International Center for Diarrheal Disease Research in Bangladesh. More than 6,000 children were admitted annually for treatment for malnourishment at the Nutrition Rehabilitation Unit. I was looking at preventative measures to address malnutrition in these children and their mothers through the use of locally available and culturally acceptable foods. The mothers would tell me that when the rains come and they eat small fish, their eyesight would be better. I remember thinking about this and mulling over the age old Bangladeshi proverb, Mashebate Bengali, which means fish and rice make a Bengali. And I was wondering why in this proverb, fish was placed before the staple food, rice. The data and the research on the nutritional value of the local fish species was not there. Between my field work in Bangladesh and other countries, teaching and lab work at the University of Copenhagen, my colleagues and I set out to characterize for the first time the composition of essential nutrients in small species, such as Mola and Che Changwa Pliang, two hugely popular and common small fish species in Bangladesh and Cambodia. And what we discovered proved that the mothers were right. Our that these small extreme bio that is essential for good eyesight. The research also showed that these small fish species contain not only vitamin A, but multiple other micronutrients, minerals and vitamins, and also essential fatty acids, all nutrients which have life-changing benefits to children's cognitive development and growth, especially in their first thousand days of life. However, we knew from the consumption data 
that women and children were not eating enough of these local fish species to gain nutritional benefits. And I, I had the idea to co-create food products based on fish that was suitable for the consumption by young children from the age of six months onwards, because this is the age of recommendation for complementary feeding, and as well as by pregnant and lactating women. Over the years, I worked with many local communities, students, fisheries and health officers, policymakers, and innovators to co-develop a number of practical and innovative innovations. These include homestead and polyculture with large and small fish species, wolf friend harvesting techniques, and both production and, and the consumption of these nutrient rich species. Working with world fish, I engage with local communities in Asia, in Africa, and in the Pacific, where aquatic foods are essential parts of local diets, livelihoods, and culture, and adapt these nutrition sensitive approaches to transform aquatic food systems. You are well known for your nutrition sensitive approach to food security and food systems. Can you briefly explain how this approach differs from traditional or mainstream approaches and policy to food security? Well, certainly nutrition sensitive approaches to food systems enable us to put nutrition and public health outcomes at the heart of critical questions about the way we produce, process, transport, market, and consume foods. It also asks who wants to eat and how are foods eaten? When we look at food production from a nutrition sensitive perspective, it fundamentally changes the way we think about the entire food system and all the various people who are engaged from production and all the way to consumption and even plate waste. Our research questions and potential solutions expand from a narrow focus on food production activities to a plethora of food systems activities, which also includes related policies and investments. Essentially, it changes our goal from feeding a growing global population by focusing on the quantity of foods, few staple foods produced to nourishing all people and all nations by also focusing on food quality, nutrients and food safety of a whole range of diverse foods, while at the same time sustaining the health of our planet. You're well known both as a scientist and as an international advocate. How did you find your voice for advocacy and what shift would you like to see in the international or global agenda? My research convinced me that we can transition to sustainable, healthy diets for all, leaving no one behind when we consider diversity, diversity throughout the entire food system. This means beyond and producing larger quantities and taking into consideration the diversity of foods that are nutritious, safe, and affordable. This is why it is so crucial to change the narrative from feeding to nourishing. There is now growing momentum around the global call to action to radically transform our food systems. For example, now with the UN Food Systems Summit 2021. So this opens up opportunities for us, for us to examine all food, land and waters more broadly and more holistically. My work on nutrition 
sensitive approaches in aquatic food systems shows that fish and other aquatic foods are an integral part of food, land and water system transformations. This is the shift I would like to see. Fish and other aquatic foods alongside staple foods, vegetables, fruit and livestock must occupy a more central role in nutrition as well in policy investments. You've also been an inspiration and mentor to many young scientists. I wonder, why have you prioritized mentorship in your career in this way? One of the most rewarding aspects of my career has been the opportunity to teach, guide, mentor, and support, I would say, thousands of young people, especially young women in their early careers. Working with young people inspires and energizes me. They are full of bright ideas and new ways of thinking. Planting an idea in the mind of a young person and watching this idea grow in ways I could never imagine is extremely rewarding. This is why we must encourage and support young women and men, especially from low and middle income countries to become food systems champions and bring their diverse voices and perspectives to nourish all people, all nations, and our planet. Thank you so much for talking to me today. And congratulations on the award.